Hello, my name is Rain, and welcome to my channel where I discuss Fantasy Formula 1. Today's video is going to be all about the Belgian Grand Prix, but I feel like I have to address something first. Sort of the elephant in the room, if you will. Yeah, so George Russell got disqualified from the Belgian Grand Prix, and I mean, we were all shocked. He won from 6th position, that was all him, probably the best individual driver performance of the year. Turns out his car is his car was too light. He got disqualified, and that has massive repercussions for Formula One fantasy. And we're going to discuss that. We're also going to discuss how now that we've entered the summer break, how do we plan going forward? What is the goal? Not just for me personally, but what should your target be for the final races of the season once we get through this? long and dreadful summer break we're going to talk about the checo situation and all of that stuff so strap in let's get right to it before we go to the review of the belgian grand prix i know i know sponsored segment but please stick around i promise you i promise you you're gonna want to hear this this video is sponsored by formula one widgets or race widgets it's an app for ios that's completely free to download and it contains all the data you need for F1 to level up your F1 viewing experience and F1 fantasy experience. So you really have no excuse not to get it if you're an F1 fantasy fan and you have an iOS and you have space on your phone. It has a really, really cool integration with F1 fantasy specifically where you can put the F1 fantasy deadline straight onto your home unlock screen to make sure you never miss a deadline ever again and just clicking on it immediately takes you to the website so you can make changes to your team. The app contains things such as track details to weather updates and you know that I need weather updates if you've been watching my live streams recently. Uh, it has breakdowns for fastest laps, pit stops and more. Uh, and that, you know, the, the F1 fantasy integration I talked about earlier. And also another really cool feature is that during like a live session, whether it be qualifying the race or a practice session, you can listen into specific driver radios and like really listen to them. And then all of that content on top of that is just available as a widget for you to just add onto your home screen immediately, customize it, make it look cool. So if you have an iOS and you want to upgrade your F1 fantasy game, either scan the QR code above me or click the link in the description to go straight to the App Store and download the app. Thank you so much to Formula One Widgets for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to your regularly scheduled content. It wouldn't be a Rain Fantasy video without first discussing what happened to my team. And if you didn't watch the deadline stream last Saturday, you missed some, um, some panicking. Uh, <laughs> I had my fantasy tip of the week, my Rain Fantasy number one tip of the week, be don't panic because everyone was panicking and uh, well I panicked but I ended up doing a a simple move it was George Russell to Oscar Piastri I could just exactly afford it with like 0.1 million to spare in the bank with the money that I had saved up and I really had two sort of ways I could go with my team it was either go for a Max Verstappen Yuki Sonoda team or it was to go for a, a double or triple McLaren lineup and I end up going with what some people call the boring route and I, I, I do kind of agree just because we were expecting McLaren to be much stronger than they were uh, turns out I was wrong I mean Max Verstappen was definitely probably the pick to have but the difference wasn't that great and even though I probably I would have gotten more points had I brought Max and Yuki in I wouldn't have had Piastri and Piastri got 30 points he increased in price again and he just looks like a really good pick to have in the future. I also got quite lucky that I didn't bring in the McLaren Constructor for a minus 10 hit. Because if I had done that, I would have had Shogun Yu, which DNF'd. And McLaren weren't that dominant. And the, the Constructor I would have taken out would have been Ferrari, which, which did surprisingly well with Charles Leclerc finishing on the podium after George Russell's DNF. And then I obviously got massive, like massively lucky that I ended up selling George Russell. I mean, George Russell was getting sold no matter what, uh, just because of what happened in Hungary. I had to sell George Russell to to afford any of the moves that I was I was eyeing up. So George Russell was always going to get sold. I was a bit salty initially when he did win that I didn't have him because I knew it would be a one million increase and. 
I once again like sold the the winning driver. That's not the first time that's happened this season, but it ended up working out really, really, really well. I did obviously have the Mercedes constructor, which got a, a big minus 25 from George Russell's disqualification, but a lot of people had Mercedes, and I saw people within the top 100 who had Mercedes that still increased uh, in rank. So the Mercedes constructor did not hurt that much. Obviously, those of you who went with Red Bull Racing and McLaren, I mean, you're in a fantastic spot. I don't think that many people had Red Bull Racing and Ferrari, but those of you with Red Bull Racing McLaren obviously had a really, really good week and should have climbed a lot of rank. Uh, it is another red arrow for me, though, and the C tiers are just not performing. Uh, Nico, two points. Gasly, three points. Logan, two points. All of them decreasing in, par in price by 0.1 million. I'm very tired of, of Pierre Gasly. I, I just want him to perform like Ocon for one race. I just want Nico to perform like Magnussen. Uh, but there just aren't. I'm not obviously not, I'm not expecting anything from Logan Sargent. But his two points is, is more than I could have wanted. So I'm not but hurt about that. But I, I, I am a bit hurt about Nico and Gasly. I could have had Yuki. I could have had Magnussen had I do, done some different transfers previously. So these this nico and gasly that i have right now could have been a yuki Tsunoda, which i was really really eyeing up and really really wanted for this race and he did end up rising in price but only really after uh russell's uh disqualification so he he wasn't that great of a pick but he did end up being good uh but it's just those decisions from earlier on in the season that's piled on which has led to me having the budget that i've had and being stuck with the assets that i've had uh not picking up magnuson early and and, and things like that so unlucky uh it's it's the biggest red arrow actually um in a while uh negative 1925 i put it down below here down to 15656 and for the past couple of races it's been a steady arrow downwards uh unlucky unlucky some races have obviously only been a, a couple hundred positions but I haven't really gained a lot of positions since, like, Monaco. I believe I did increase in rank in Spain, but that was very, very little. And, and that only really just made up from the, the loss that I had in Canada after the, the Ferrari DNFs. So, the, the team isn't looking fantastic. I don't think it was the Mercedes fault entirely. I do actually think it's the, the 2X on Lando combined with a lot of people switching to the Max Verstappen lineup. Uh, or those that did have the 2X on, on Piastri or another front driver or had Lewis Hamilton, uh, who obviously ended up winning the race. So that's my team. No money in the bank, but I do have three transfers since I only did the one. So going into the break, going into Sandvort, I will have three transfers available and that does feel good. So I'm not too down about the red arrow, but I really, really could use a green arrow pretty soon. Usually when making these uh, types of videos i like to look, have a look at my team and sort of tinker with it live in front of you and put out some ideas for what the plan is going forward but because there's three whole weeks until the next race i don't think i can really make any really any guesses at all one thing that we can do, though, is just discuss the assets, what, how they've performed so far this season and what I feel about them now. So this whole sort of segment of the video is going to be less concrete and less like direct ideas than what there usually is. But there will be a, a classic transfer plans video once we get closer to Sandvort. For now, though, one thing I do want to discuss is Lando Norris. Um, Lando Norris, I got him in a, at a really good time, to be fair, and he has been really good for me. But I have two issues with Lando Norris. Number one, he is, does not look guaranteed to get driver of the day. After, his, after the sort of McLaren fumble, I guess, in Hungary, Lando Norris has been seen more, as, more and more as a villain. And when you're seen as a villain, or someone that isn't performing, or someone that isn't living up to the potential, he is less likely to get driver of the day. And especially now that Max Verstappen is winning every race and Lando Norris is getting second, but someone else is winning, such as a Hamilton or a Piastri, Lando is not taking the driver of the days anymore, which does remove a lot of his value. 
Another big problem I have with Lando, and this is actually more in terms of like his actual race performances, uh, and that is how he performs in the starts. And yes, I know he's been unlucky in some starts, in some starts this year for sure. But F1 Big Data posted something really interesting on Twitter. So far in 2024, sprints excluded. These are the position changes after lap one. And you can see a bunch of things here. Um, Magnussen clearly overperforming because he started on the wets in a race. Um, uh, but one thing that is very interesting here, and obviously you can't really look too much into this. I mean, shows third, right? And, and he's the worst asset in the game right now. The, at least the worst C-tier asset. I think Lance Stroll is worse, but, but I think shows worse than, than uh, Logan Sargent right now just because of the car he's in. Norris is second lost. Uh, Norris has lost nine places in total, adding up all the starts this year. And his starts have been a problem. It happened in Hungary, where he really lost the win to Piastri on lap one at the start. And again, now in um, uh, in Spa. And yes, he did you know touch the gravel with his, his left rear tire, which ended up making him lose an additional two positions but even before that piastri had overtaken him and, and lando started from fourth right yeah p p4 piastri from p5 piastri overtook lando lando ended up being fifth lando touched the wheel uh into the gravel uh sort of being almost being forced out a bit i i don't think that was entirely his his own fault uh, but ended up losing two more positions because of that. So that really set him back in the race, which ended up making it so that Piastri got the favorable uh, strategy, which made Piastri finish P2. And I think Lando would have finished P2 had he had a better start. And we're, we have this driver now who everyone's expecting to win. By the way, Mercedes, with the car they had at the start of the year, have won more races this year than McLaren, which is insane when you think about it. We have this driver that we're expecting to win, but he is not performing in the starts. He's losing positions in the starts. Coupled with that, he is an A-tier asset. He's not increasing in price. And his teammate, who's a B-tier asset, and what, 3 million cheaper than him almost, is outperforming him. I think Piastri is clearly outperforming Lando over the past two, three races. And it's not just because of uh, his win in, in Hungary. It, it is mainly because he's he's always been on par with Lando. But his race pace is getting better and better and better. And Lando's start are really bad. They're really poor. Yes, he's been unlucky in some, but it is a trend uh, that, that we're seeing. And when Lando loses those positions at the start, Piastri gets the favorable treatment with the team, which I think is fair. Now, you could argue Lando should have won in Hungary anyway because the team gave him the favorable treatment and, and that whole you know debacle, McLaren being McLaren. But, again, yes, Lando Norris is good, but I think Piastri is at least equal. And because of Piastri being equal in terms of driver and points potential, him being a beater as it just makes him infinitely better, in my opinion. So, I don't think Lando Norris is as set in stone anymore, and that opens up a lot of lines. What do I mean by that? Well, if you want to get rid of Lando Norris, if you don't want to run Max Verstappen because the Red Bull does not look fast... That opens you up to buying another B-tier asset and properly running a 2B lineup. We've been calling this a 2B lineup for a while, even though it's been Lando Norris plus a B-tier. It's been an AB lineup. Uh, if you don't know what that means, you should check out the video that I have. Link will be in the description where I discuss what the uh, how the budget system and how the price increases work in Formula 1 Fantasy. And one thing that you know I hinted at at the start of the video... George Russell now is at 20.7 million. The closest B-tier driver that's good uh, to his price price point is Carl Sainz at 22.6. Now, this comes after George Russell in uh, two of the last three races have decreased by 0.5 million. Uh, after, his, uh, after his DNF in... In Silverstone and then now his DQ in Spa. George Russell being 20.7 million is really a cheat code, a cheat code in, in F1 Fantasy. I think he is almost a, a, a just instant pick if, if I can call it that right. 
he feels so just easy to slot in because yes he's been unlucky but i still don't think he's that much worse than lewis hamilton yes hamilton is has been performing better but i mean russell won the race and even if his car had not been underweight he still would have been like what p2 maybe p3 uh, without the 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 car being underweight some argue that he, he still would have won i don't know i'm not an expert in that but he he put it on pole in silverstone when um when he then ended up not finishing the race i think hamilton would have taken the win from him anyway but he dnf'd after starting up pole position so even though you can argue that that hamilton is, is better and i think you know, hamilton is the better driver george russell is also not far behind him and him being that much cheaper than every other b tier asset just gives you so much wiggle room and especially especially to those of you who are lower on the budget i think the piastri russell combo is going to be the mo the, the most common combo we see uh among f1 fantasy strategists especially especially those who are like below 120 million on budget my budget by the way for those of you wondering after this race uh is a solid 120.7 i feel like i'm like just above average when it comes to budget obviously some people are up on like 125 million but i mean they're playing a different game than us so uh we shouldn't worry with that speaking of that i'm gonna get to that in a second if you're one of those people that's on 125 million first of all you don't need tips from me but second of all i'm gonna give you tips later on in the video so a george russell piastri combo is very very possible right now i'm not saying this is the best for my team how my team is structured i mean this would allow me to you know upgrade some mclarens and then i can upgrade a pierre gasly because pierre gasly is really annoying to something like a magnuson because magnuson just rises every, every time and you can see what i can build with george russell's budget what george russell's price allows uh none of the other b tier drivers allow me to 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 get to a team like this so george russell as a driver very 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 interesting now and i think should be on everyone's radar because of his price point i think the likes of max verstappen and Lando norris uh less favorable uh after what we've seen in the last two three races piastri looking like the the best asset in the game uh, on the driver's side what i'm about to show you feels legal with russell's price decrease to 20.7 million way way underpriced at this point in the season for what that car can perform with piastri really outperforming lando norris we have now reached a point where some lucky strategists out there can reach a 3b lineup yes you heard that right and i'm sorry if you're one of those people like me sitting on 120 million in budget we can only dream of a a team such as this with a budget of 125.7 million you can now reach a really good triple b lineup now obviously you could still do this but why you need 125.7 million is that I, I believe that the top four constructors are just superior right now and you kind of need to have them which combination of them you have is up to you and i still think the ferrari and the mercedes combo is very very viable it's cheap they're b tier assets they gain you budget they increase in price and with ferrari and mercedes you need 125.7 million to afford piastri signs and russell alongside show and sergeant at this point you don't need seaters anymore we're spending every week talking about the best seater you know yuki sonoda is the best seater followed by magnus and followed by hulkenberg followed by yada yada it doesn't matter right the c tiers at the end of the day doesn't matter the b tiers and the a tiers are the drivers are the constructors are the assets that bring in the points and once you can reach a team like this you are going to win we can't do this they can the ri the rich the rich ones out there can and this is scary i mean those that are at a budget like this i would honestly kind of urge you to start building towards this pretty soon uh, obviously don't take a minus 30 or anything but 
even if you just like switch to Ferrari Mercedes now to gain the budget from them, or you so you you know you're not sitting with a McLaren and then Ferrari has a good race and increases one million and then you're priced out. So you switch to Ferrari Mercedes, so you have that budget building combo. You might be sitting on like a Piastri Russell, and then you might have like a Magnussen or or a Hulkenberg in here. So you do it in like increments, right? But you start building towards this now, so that you're almost guaranteed to be able to afford this, even if it like one or two races pass, because this combo is going to be the one that wins F1 Fantasy. And if you're even richer than this, like imagine if you had this, but with the McLaren in there, when the McLarens are really, really good. Or or similar, right? Obviously, don't look at all of this. Alonso's not a good pick. But the, the, triple, the triple B lineup is possible for some people out there. And uh, I mean, yeah, go for it. And uh, I think you will see guaranteed success in the races that are left in the season. I was going to spend a portion of this video talking about chips. What chips do we have? What chips are left in the season? How should you use them? But that is a long discussion. I mean, that's a 30 minute video in and of itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this little segment in this video now. Advertising that sometime in the future, sometime in the summer break when I have the time... I will drop a comprehensive, like, updated guide, updated chip guide for the rest of the 2024 season. If you haven't seen my chip guide already that I post early in the season, most of that still apply in terms of general strategy. But, you know, we've learned some new things. So I'm going to make a video discussing each chip and when I think you should use it if you still have it, regardless of if you're my team or someone else's. Some people might be sitting with all their chips remaining. I have three. But I will be discussing every chip and where I would use them if I still had them. So that video is coming shortly, maybe in two, three weeks time. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Next, I just want to discuss the Checo situation real quick. Um, we've talked about Norris in a driver sense and you know not in an F1 fantasy sense. And this does have F1 fantasy implications. And uh, reports are coming out now that Checo is confirmed to stay until you know throughout the season even though there were heavy rumor heavy rumors and and heavy speculations that he was going to be out in the summer break due to his bad performances he dropped from p2 to p8 in the race in spa which is not a good look he finished last in formula a even i mean max Verstappen passing him is fine you know letting him pass but everyone even signs it, it It's looking bad. And I do think Red Bull could end up losing the Constructor Championship due to this. And if the Constructor Championship... If the top four teams weren't as close, if there was a clear second best team, such as a McLaren at the end of last year, I, I don't believe they would have done this. I think they, they're hoping that Mercedes, Ferrari and McLaren keep stealing points from each other. If... You know, after all this, they still decide to fire Checo. Let's let's discuss what that would mean for F1 Fantasy. Because when Gasly got fired, that's sort of the same. They said that he would stay and then suddenly he was gone. So things can definitely change. And if Checo is fired, I think we're all expecting it to be Ricardo. I think it should be Sonoda personally, but I mean, they still have Ricardo for a reason. So I do think it, it probably would be Ricardo stepping in. And in that case, Ricardo obviously wouldn't be whatever he is at now. What? 11 million? Ricardo is at 11.3 million. So he obviously wouldn't be there. Uh, he would most likely be sort of like when, when they added Oli Berman for one race they would sort of deactivate the Daniel Ricardo Racing Bulls asset, V-Carb asset, similar to how if you had signs in, in Saudi, you kind of have to sell them. Uh, and there would be a new Liam Lawson asset for V-Carb, which would come in at a price. Uh, my guess is probably 9 or 10 million. And then they would add a new Ricardo asset, remove Paris, just how they removed 
uh, Carlos Sainz. And it would be a new Ricardo asset coming in at what my personal guess would be like 22 million. Now, in that case, Daniel Ricardo at Red Bull would be a very, very interesting option. Because at 22 million, he would be cheaper than Sainz and would, you know, make the, the 3B lineup that I discussed earlier be even cheaper. And, and uh, maybe you could even upgrade the show to an Albon or something like that. Or, or a, a Ferrari to a to McLaren uh, later down the line. So, if this were to happen, it would have massive, massive implications for F1 Fantasy. And I was expecting that switch to happen, which is another reason why I wanted three transfers going to the summer break. Especially if someone like Liam Lawson comes in undervalued at like 8, 8.5. I would really want to be able to get that in. So, having those extra three transfers would allow me to maneuver any you know switch in 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 seats now that's looking unlikely after the comments uh recently but it's still a possibility uh you can never really rule it out with with red bull there's some reports coming out saying that liberty media stepped in uh because they don't want to lose fans for the mexican grand prix i i don't know how true that is the, it's the speculations i've seen, seen a source on it uh, it, it wasn't Dutch or, or German, so uh, the translated version might not be entirely correct. So I don't want to. I just want to say that that could be a reason why money could be a reason why. And I, I, at this point, Perez kind of feels like a pay driver almost. But that is what I think would happen fantasy wise. Should Perez get the kick, we'll just have to wait and see. For now, it looks like he stays in the car. And Checo staying in the car is bad. Uh, I think the Checo Perez asset is probably the worst B tier asset after the Aston Martins. I would probably have Checo if I could afford it over an Alonso or, or a Stroll. Maybe not even over an Alonso, actually, now that I think about it, just because Alonso is, is, is that much cheaper. But, uh, yeah, no, Alonso is bad. Alonso is bad. Um, I would have Checo over Alonso, but not over anyone else and at 23.3 million i mean you have george russell at 20.7 so it's not really a competition at all between these two assets and, and even with even with signs uh is is uh, that's the wrong asset even with signs uh he's he's way cheaper and and a much rather have a, a color signs than a checo and then i mean it gets real bad when you look at like leclerc and piastri who's only 0.3 more expensive than paris uh, so I think Paris is a complete avoid, and he does bring down the value of the Red Bull Racing asset a lot, especially with how crash prone he's been. You don't want to get DNFs when you're running Red Bull Racing. When you're paying 29.1 million for a constructor, you need that constructor to bring on points. Yes, Red Bull Racing is really, really good when it comes to fastest pit stops. They got points in this race as well, and they like if you look at the top ten fastest pit stops, I think Red Bull Racing was four or five of them. So even though they only got the, the second place one, uh, the second place points, the five points for um, for fastest pit stop in in uh, in Spa, I mean they they were they were five of five or four of the top ten fastest pit stops. So I mean Red Bull Racing always there and will always be good for that. If Checo could just finish fifth in a race i would be way more inclined to buy red bull racing but with the price i'm personally just looking to to you know looking to mclaren ferrari and mercedes mclaren if mclaren uh look really fast and i'm expecting them to one two sort of like they did in hungary uh ferrari and mercedes if i'm looking for a budget sort of position uh, mercedes looked like the the team to have at the moment they look to be the third fastest team. They're cheaper than Ferrari. Ferrari have really dropped off in, in performance after Monaco. And after I made a tier list saying the most essential asset in the game. And Ferrari was, you know, having Mercedes was, was trolling. But I think I feel like any combination of, of these could be right. But I, I do think Mercedes plus one is the correct choice. Uh, you could even put a Red Bull Racing in there if you, if you really want to and you trust Max. But... That's sort of my, the constructor side of the thing. As for the, the cheaper assets, I've seen someone hint at an Aston. I think that's really incorrect. I'm sorry. 
Uh, I think if you are thinking of running something crazy, you just run an RB, a Haas, or an Alpine, and, and upgrade your drivers. Could you do this? Maybe. It's it, it would be more enticing. Say if all four of the constructors, uh, of the top constructors, were A-tier assets, I would be more inclined to maybe go for a punt on a cheap one. Uh, to just run one of the big four and then plus like an Alpine, a Haas, or an RB. But because both Ferrari and Mercedes are still B tier assets, I feel like you you get enough budget gain with those, and even more so because they could actually reach that one that one million increase. Uh, so I'm I'm not really interested in the cheap constructor assets for the moment. A lot of different talking points today, but I think that finally will wrap it up. I think it was quite a long one. Uh, thanks again to Race Widgets for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you for subscribing and liking. If you haven't done that. Why not? You should. Uh, I can't believe I've been doing this for, well, half the season now, more than half the season, all the way up into the summer break. I didn't think I was going to keep doing this, but uh, your, your guys' support have been amazing, and uh, I'm very, very excited for what's to come. Everything uh, that has to do with Formula 1 and Formula 1 fantasy for the rest of the season. I can't wait to watch it as a sports fan. Uh, the championship is, is way closer than, than any of us would have imagined. And the F1 fantasy is way more exciting because of that. So thank you so much for sticking with me. There are more things coming and also maybe some FPL content to look out for in the summer break. So be sure to stick around and subscribe if that's something that you're interested in. I'll see you next time. Ciao.